the basic premise is that it's not enough to simply have several sets of data that you want to compare to each other. And it's not enough even more to have that data show that as the terms or semesters or years pass, you've got improvement. We care about statistically significant improvement. And to do that, we care about something called analysis of variance. Variance is just a way to analyze numbers to see how wiggly they are. Think of a lake. You could either have a very smooth lake, in which case the variance would be very low, or you could have a very turbulent lake, in which case the variance would be high. For the two different lakes, if I saw a really high or a really low uh, wave on that lake, in the placid lake, a high wave would be weird, an evidence of a boat. In a very turbulent lake, a high wave might not mean much at all. So it's not enough to see high or low or how something's increasing or decreasing. We care about it in the context of how much the numbers themselves are varying. So I've got a standard Microsoft Excel 2010, and the first thing we need to do is make it so that this data tab on the ribbon has the right tools for us to use. Go ahead and click on File, click on Options, and click on Add-ins. And in all likelihood, right under where I have on my screen Analysis Tool Pack VBA under, under inter, Inactive Application Add-ins, you're going to also have the Analysis Tool Pack down here. So look down here in this area, but click on the Analysis Tool Pack until it's highlighted. Select Go. And make sure that you've checked the Analysis Tool Pack button, as well as that you've selected the Solver Add-in. And then click OK. All right, so now I'm going to go down here to three semesters worth of data. This is for uh, fall 2010, spring 2011, and fall 2011, three consecutive semesters worth of the final course percent in one of my courses. We're going to go and select on the data toolbar. You're going to select data analysis there at the far right. We're going to go ahead and you might have to scroll around on this until you get ANOVA single factor because we're only comparing one single issue, namely final total grade in a particular course. We'll select OK. Because I've done this a couple times, we've got some information here already, but let's go ahead and set it up. So in the input range, I'm going to go ahead and click on the A1, which is where my first piece of information is. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to hold down my shift key, and I'm going to then use my mouse click to click on the bottom part there. This selects a square's worth of information. I'm going to make sure that it's grouped by columns, because mine is grouped by columns. Each column represents a different term. I'm going to make sure that the labels in the first row is selected because my first row is my labels for my data. And because this is an educational setting, I am going to use an alpha of 0.2. The lower your alpha, so if you used an alpha of 0.15 or 0.1 or 0.05 even, would make it harder and harder for you to decide that there was statistically significant difference. It can help to do this on a continuum and try several things, but for your basic educational setting, my simple rule of thumb is go ahead and use an alpha of 0.2. Then your output range, go ahead and select something. Again, I've just selected this F3 spot. That's just where my information is going to be stuck into my table. You want to make sure you select a clear area that has plenty of space around it so you don't accidentally overwrite your column information that you've already typed in. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to double click my F column. I'm going to go and select this average right here. I'm just going to be a little more specific. This is actually the arithmetic mean. It's just a particular type of average. If you're in my stats class, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to go ahead, again, if you're in one of my stats classes, and talk about standard deviation because that's going to be a little bit interesting as well. Standard deviation is just the square root. That was kind of failing to type in there. It's just the square root of the variance. So I go ahead and select the variance. I go ahead and drag this number down. And then because I'd like to kind of understand what numbers are happening here, I'm going to select that arithmetic mean, go to home, and I'm going to remind it that it's in percents, but I do want to have an extra decimal place here. 
just so I can see what's going on. Now that I've done that, I'm ready to do my analysis. What we see is this, going from the bottom up, I have consecutive semesters of my statistics class. And if I was just looking at my normal standard information, I might be looking at this and saying, well, look, my average has gone up by at least 1% each semester. And from the fall, spring 2011 to fall 2011, when I had a whole summer to sort of analyze what was going on and create a better fix, I had a pretty good jump between those two terms. But that's not quite enough. That doesn't give me everything that I want to talk about. And again, if you're in my classes and you know what standard deviation means, you're aware that this is some sort of percent change that's general and typical in the class. And so I can create a low and a high general bound for my class by taking the average and subtracting the standard deviation. And again, I can use my fill bar to do that for all my classes. And then I can do it for the high level by taking my average and adding the standard deviation. And what this gives me is a low and high range that since these classes are approximately normal, means that in fall of 2011, I expected for a low score of about 43% and a high score of 86%, so between those two ranges and all the scores in between, I expected to have approximately 68% of my entire class fall inside of there. So that becomes the usual place where I expect students to get their grades. Anyone who scores lower than a 43 and anyone who scores higher than an 86 becomes sort of different. They're outside the majority of the class. And if you look at these low and high scores, these are good. I've gotten my low score higher, and I've gotten my high score higher. So I've got my middle 68% of all my students, what do you call the normal student, the biggest group, 68% of them, fall in this, this middle range, and these are going up. So I get excited. I think that I'm doing good stuff in this class. I've been using a lot of new techniques. I've put a lot of time, effort, and thought into the class. And I look at these percents, and I might get happy. But statistics is going to make sure that I don't get too overly happy because there's two numbers we want to look at. You want to look at the F-test value that we've calculated or that I've had Excel calculate, and you want to compare it to the F-critical number. This F-critical number is based on how many students overall I've analyzed over the semesters and that 20% alpha that I had entered into the program earlier. This is the critical value. If I get a value that's higher than this, then I know that my data is not just looking like it's going higher, but it is actually going higher. If I look at my F-critical test and I decide that it's not actually going higher, then that means that maybe I'm just currently in a bubble. Just like we have the stock market bubble for tech and housing, I could currently be in a stats bubble. And when you compare these two numbers, you see that I have a 0.95, and my critical cutoff level is a 1.6. And this is unfortunate for me, because it means that I haven't reached the cutoff of a 1.6 or higher. This F test over here, in a perfect world, would be 1.6 or 1.68, something higher than my critical cutoff. I'm close, but I'm not over my critical level. So what I'd say to myself is, you're probably doing good work. The fact that these percents are increasing is a comforting thought. The fact that these ranges are going up and improving means that good things are probably happening with your students. But we haven't passed that burden of scientific proof. I haven't gotten beyond reasonable doubt. I could just have gotten lucky in my later semesters with my mix of students. I could have simply been... Uh, fortuitous in how much people were able to study. Maybe with the bad economy, people were able to devote more time to school because they didn't have to work because they were unemployed. 
so they're able to do better in stats class. I haven't yet proved rigorously that I've successfully created something good here in this class. So this is the type of stuff you want to look at when you're analyzing your data. It's not enough to just see simple improvements, even fairly large improvements like we've seen here. You have to compare it to the F-test, and this is called analysis of variance. And here's how to do it in Excel.